know color and material it's it's interesting for me uh, like uh, yeah that's that's about the jasso uh, you know panels and uh, yeah we can move further these are some examples is very subtle and very minimal it needs to be seen in person so okay you know, i'm not sure like whether you can make out anything at all like you know so it needs to be seen in person because it's a lot lot of nuances that nuances of line like a uh, lot of things happening and it needs to be seen in person so it's always difficult for me to talk when yeah i'm just showing some examples yeah we can move forward and this is again my white panels is it's made out of pinam mark you know it's filled with pinam mark pinam uh, the tool like uh, you can uh, the detail you can go to the next one so the detail uh, yeah, you can see this these are like uh, individual marks you know meditatively one after the other like you know you tap on the on the gesso panel and uh, it creates a surface it's, it's also for me it's uh, a pinam a marks are uh, personally for me is the absence of sound because you are tapping with the tool like with a you know uh, hammer and with the tool it's a sound for me basically it's uh, yeah i thought i mean for me mark making in a way uh, like you know yeah i mean i kind of approach it uh yeah uh, uh, these are again we can move on there are others these are again some title basically i have uh, sort of come up with my own system of titling it's mostly numbers you know either like you know i mean uh, the titled version or it's the place or like you know because uh, i thought it's easy than to have i mean because since they're so minimal and this also a lot to do with seeing like you know i did not want any sort of like to avoid the representational sort of uh, you know association with that you know i kind of uh, created a system so it's mostly numbers sometimes the place sometimes the time and sometimes it depends on like right, you know i mean the number of lines are like it's it's all to do with the work itself you know i kind of came up with that so these are particularly recent some of the recent thinam panels like uh, i uh, i kind of also thought it would be interesting to also um, uh, uh, no i mean shaped panels you uh, know uh, to sort of uh, uh, wanted to do uh, i mean these thinams uh, have different shapes the different geometric shapes within uh, the tools which i thought it would be interesting because uh, this has really engaged with all these as whatever i'm talking about whether it's line or the uh, shapes or all these uh, uh, you know elements of uh, you could also say aspects of minimalism or uh, you know abstraction has been all already been kind of engaged you know earlier mm -hmm. on so it is for me it was interesting to sort of uh, you know see it in my own way like see what i you know to as a dialogue like engage with the idea of shape uh, so instead of uh, trying out i mean shapes are deciding arbitrarily i kind of chose the shape of the thinam itself Uh, no, as the shape of the panel. Thinam is Malayalam. Thinam. Thinam is not that. Thinam is the tool which is used for the jewelry. That's what the jewelers call. I mean, uh, in back in uh, Bangalore home, my father, everybody called that as Thinam. Yeah. No, thin. It's called Thinam. So I use the same word. That's the tool. yet yeah, it has a uh, yeah a lot of motifs and all geometric and all kind of you uh, know not pure form it's all kind of slippery sort of you know different kind of geometry and which is interesting you know so for me like it's uh, yeah interesting to see 
Oh, no, it doesn't. You have to tap it. The way you tap on the gold bangle, it's similar. Yeah. I'm, I thought of it. So yeah. I it's a hammer, yeah. small hammer, like, you know, it, uh, not with great pressure, no? yeah. pressure, then it might be, you know. Um, so it creates its own rhythm and pattern. For me, it's more of a sound, you know, absence of sound. I see sound in these words. Uh, personally, like, you know, because you are, it makes really big noise, like, you know, in sound. So, uh, these are some of the recent works where I also sort of, uh, you know, engaging with the idea of shape of the canvas or shape of the, uh, you know, panel, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the letting thing down, the, the tool itself deciding the shape. So, we can move on. So, you can see this the shape of the tool. So I've recreated on a larger format. So it's kind of uh, you know, very pre sort of you know, condition decided. Like, you know, so it's, it's interesting to work like that. It's much easier. Like, you should utilize this. So you don't have to really explain. Yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. oh, preparing the board is a long, long process, which is interesting. Uh, also for me personally, I like. Uh, it's it's a wooden panel. I kind of stretch a cloth on that. I mean, uh, uh, basically ply plywood, and I have supports at the back, and stretch uh, non-bleached cloth, and then start coating with the gesso. Gesso has certain. Uh, it's almost like cooking. You have to prepare with certain temperature and double boil and uh, you know do it. And uh, yeah, it needs to be in certain temperature when you coat it. So layer by layer, so just before I embed or for thingam, it's embedding copper wire, 20 coats I coat. Bangalore's weather, three coats in a day I can finish. So the next, it continues. And only when it dries, you can coat. And then I make lines uh, with the needle. Uh, no, I mark the uh, uh, kind of whatever lines, the distance. It's all kind of, all, I, I, when somebody was asking about the drawings, I basically made a log book. It's, it's all numbers and measures, and like, you know, uh, one way I enjoy because it's also very disciplined in that sense, very sort of like, you know, strict, like all arithmetic and, and calculations. At the same time, when you do this, once I finish embedding the wire, then stretch the wire, copper wire, uh, you drill at the edges. You make the line with the needle, drill at the edges, and put the copper wire, stretch it like a goldsmith with this beautiful line. Like I've done, I've worked with wires also. No, uh, no, straight line. No, no, I kind of, it's, it's as beautiful as pencil drawing. And also with the color, like, you know, I mean, it's a lot of aspects I, mean, I, I enjoy with metal has a life of its own. Anyway, stretch it uh, and uh, embed, I mean, tie it up at the back, and then coat it again with 15 coats nearly. And then sand, when I sand, like it goes out of control. Like you have you with lots of, uh, uh, you know, headgear and everything, like, you know, and then it dust and it's, uh, it's my blind painting. I mean, there is control at the same, in, a little bit you can, but uh, most of the time it, the, the wires start revealing itself, unraveling itself on its own, like, if I give pressure, it will break. You know, I mean, there are some broken lines or, I mean, you no know, spaces also, which is interesting. So this kind of, if you look at in terms of art historical context and the, the idea of like, you know, this kind of intention, intentionally sort of, uh, you know, uh, the chance, uh, you know, unintentional and intentional, uh, in that sense, it, it's, it's very uh, interesting to see, like it's all kind of, uh, you know, uh, one could say uh, chance element plays an important role. Like it is controlled to a certain extent. At the same time, when you come to the end of the, uh, you know, whatever finishing, uh, you know, work, it's also a lot of it is chance. So you really can't place it. There is sort of like you, you really, uh, you know, which is interesting for me. Like this play is interesting. You know, one can go on and on. Like you know. I mean, the best way for me could be to just stick to one panel, do all my life, one measurement line. It will never be the same, I tell you. It will never be the same. 
because of the the wires and because of the coating every little variation will create like you know a different work you know here i think i'm also but it is kind of uh, you know um, since it's a shaped panel i have to fit in within that so it's kind of i do have you know um, pre marks like you no know, little bit of uh, followed the line otherwise here also sometimes it will be the tap if it falls on the same there will be double mark and there will be distance and it, it creates its own rhythm you can see in the next panel so, so uh, i have to say this uh, my kind of major body of my work is also to do with panels like you no know, I, I, I you know i kind of uh, try to explore within that like mark making or the shapes or like you know, all kinds of lines and uh, you know uh, basically this is so you can go to the detail next oh that sorry the detail was there or okay that's the detail i think of the again kinam like no it's all individual thing next to each other yeah it's it's interesting like uh, yeah we can go to the next image yeah continuing with my sort of preoccupation within my own way architecture although i don't sort, sort of like no in a big way in the understanding of architecture like uh, Uh, wherever whenever i had a chance to work in a space i try to respond to the space because i believe it's very important to like you know to have a dialogue because uh, especially uh, uh, i like i said most of my works of panels white panels they are almost like fragments of walls and uh, when you place them you also like it also sort of activates the space every work of art for that matter i firmly believe activates the space in its own way there is a dialogue you know between the space and the art work like i personally believe that and when it so i i try to sort of engage with the space whenever um, whenever i had to you no know, this is a work i did in gallery ski again this work as you notice there is uh, you no know, uh i kind of simply followed the lines on the ceiling there are all this roof you know you can see the patti is like right, you know so i thought uh, uh no reflection of the lines of the ceiling like why why not like just follow it so that's what i did with the copper wire uh, stretched copper wire and uh, uh in doing so it was interesting to see uh it it was quite interesting in a way the space uh, no uh, how do you see the space now i thought uh, no there are two kinds of spaces meeting like one the architectural existing space and you know the other defined by these lines you no know? there is kind of meeting of these two you know spaces in you know in architectural sort of uh, you know um yeah if you see in those terms which for me was interesting you know uh you can move on you can show the so yeah you can if you can go back and show a bit yes. can you go back for that one more let's see yeah here like uh, this the line you see on the opposite wall is kind of stopped in the middle because i also kind of wanted to relate it to the to the door like no door i mean you have a door i mean can you go further the line stops there so i just kind of uh, left it in the middle for also for the sake of variation from the other opposite wall also as an imaginary door stopped at that you uh, know creating in a way my own way a virtual architectural space within these like with my drawing lines uh, you know it, it, I, i kind of had fun with doing that like you no know? i mean it's just always uh, you know it's quite interesting and challenging to see how the space can be transformed like you no know, how uh, you know by just merely kind of introducing something uh, you know we cannot read uh, the space only in now like with uh, whatever that's their existing architecture like it's also like the lines are dividing it and like you no know, you're also creating your own space so that is about this work uh, 
and that's it like as minimal as that and can you move on please they're all very subtle works and it's meant to be seen in person like you know i mean to see yeah there are stretched wires no 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 nothing so there i went and stretched i kind of what could i do with the space like you know what can i you know i thought beautiful lines you know why not continue the lines you know when by doing so i'm creating my own right architectural space and there is an existing space more too it could be kind of there is a connecting sort of you know also you uh, know kind of uh, divergent and separating as well as connecting uh, uh, points you can see in that yeah you can move on uh, this uh, again continuing the occupation like you know, i mean i kind of this is uh, this is done in dhaka as you see uh, like can you move on to the next slide please Uh, when i uh, was shown the space i kind of like this uh, foyer space and uh, this is a window when i looked out of the window there was a good ceiling and which for me was almost like a beautiful stacked up uh, you know grids or cubes empty cubes so to sort of bring notice <laughs> to that it's almost like a sculpture like right? no why not like you no know, do something in relation to that respond to that so i kind of can go back produce these uh, cubes they're all in gesso again at the same size of the corporate ceiling outside yeah put it there which was really a long long process and long i mean i had to stay there and work which was really interesting but in doing so i thought it was uh, you no know, it's the volume of the copper see the empty copper see it's you know by doing that i also noticed i mean the it, it it's really beautiful the window as the vantage point for the outside and this is inside this whole idea of the tension between inside and outside and finally you could see all of this on one and i was trying to bring all of this in one plane you see then you see everything together and yeah and that's the place of uh, interesting architects the muslim you know islam and who's a modernist architect and i mean there are interesting architecture over there i mean it's my personal interest nothing to do with but it's it's, it's interesting to see i mean you know yeah that was it and and yeah you can show the next slide actually there are some lines also on this if you can see uh, they had given me all the measurements and everything we had made the cubes over there but again when i went there it was a tough job anyway they were climbing up and doing all sorts of painting and all so they could measure when they measured it was all wrong wrong little bit you know i used to be the exact whatever the volume almost at least whatever then i thought okay wherever it's gone wrong let me just can you go back you know put a line there make the error part of the work so it became part of the work it's all kind of with it was nice to it's yeah you know fun part like you just do i mean whatever so it was for me personally i enjoyed it that's it i mean the next one please we I, this is uh, another uh, sort of uh, uh, i don't know if you are i uh, can you go further this is a grid made of geometrical grid made of uh, just can you go further one more one more details details i want to show the detail did further 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 and then we can come back yeah these are again tools from my actual goldsmiths use them from my father's collection most of them they were all there in a trunk and i was looking at them we can go one more you can see the detail they're all uh, interesting personally i mean uh, when you are engaging with a language you also know if you've seen like all through the connecting thread is geometry geometric vocabulary if you see my work so i mean these works i mean these 
great this cute yeah we can stop here like uh, a beautiful geometric object by themselves no i mean uh, yeah then i it's just interesting uh, to kind of like you know put them there and see what happens and the i chose mostly the geometric uh, no uh, pattern in there and the the idea or whatever we have uh, learned the idea of geometric form is very pure like you know but here they are not they are kind of the all you know um, sometimes it's really uh, uh, um, uh, you, you you cannot call it as pure geometric forms they're all different uh, you know sort of organic geometries it's kind of very slippery the, I, the geometric uh, forms which i thought uh, was interesting to place it there and can you go back and i created a grid out of it go back to the first one yeah out of these two it is it's also uh, when you uh, know see this is also uh, uh, also the work has a very performative quality to it like you to all even the panels also i always say like you have to go back and come closer to see it properly i mean it kind of when you go closer it's the all the grid sort of uh, disperses it's like making and breaking of the grid like you know you you don't see the grid at all like it's all spread all and when you come further and it's just interesting a play of like you know so in lot of ways they're all little little nuances i can go on i mean i personally kind of enjoyed doing that uh, with the object how it could and can you move on further and this is again it just so cute i just put it there uh, with two uh, uh, tools is called this the uh, acche again embedded in them these are very uh, decorative flower and leaf which is the jewelry basically jewelry motifs just to kind of you know bring in the dialogue i mean every no but then still it will be interesting to have this dialogue this is where it comes from like you know with the geometric and this you know so you can just move further in doing so it's also like you know it's difficult to in lot of ways it's interesting because these um uh, geometric uh, objects if you consider them also has a history of its own cultural history and also uh, personal history like it's been individually used by people in making things so when these layers are added when it's also difficult to read it as simply as a geometric object although it's the basic form is that inside is that and how do you read them that's my question like you know how do you sort of like read do you read it as a simple geometric object or how do you sort of so that was the you no know, that's that's what i was trying to see like what happens when i put it there yeah you can oh this is a uh, Like I said, log and graph. <laughs> like it's all measurement. I, I work on the graph first, and then translate it. Uh, no, even then it's also it's it's uh, yeah. Because I don't have uh, uh, this big studio to lay down everything at once. In parts, I just put it and see. And this work actually I didn't put it at all. It's all dependent on the graph. Whatever it is, like no, it's going to be there. we adjusted a bit here and there if it was too or like no uh, near the floor or like you know just touching the ceiling and otherwise it was all dark so this is also like you know i kind of uh, like i mean personally for me it's you know it's a thing. yeah you can move on okay. now this is just installation shots i'm showing I'm, I'm thinking with some inspiration uh, because, as I say, like for me, like it's important. Like with my work, uh, uh, it, it matters a lot when when I put the work, which work, uh, you know, kind of uh, how you begin, like you know, how you start moving the movements and uh, how you encounter the work and everything is for me very important because it's everything is has having a dialogue with each other. So it's uh, that I mean, you know, so just. for the you no know, i'm interested in architect basically i mean i i'm not much i'm not an architect but i'm just saying as an artist it's interesting for me the space because that's where you see architecture is variations you know so it's interesting to 
engage with that. So you can move on to the next one. So yeah, you can see uh, there again, like the panels, again, the Jesso panels. Uh, this is a skylight. I didn't know what to do. Like, no, there was this huge skylight, beautiful skylight, where uh, you could see the sunlight, you know, kind of movement of the sunlight. I thought it would be interesting instead of putting the panel on the wall, subvert a bit, put it on the on the you know, floor, let it float. And also it catches the movement of the sun, like from morning to the evening. Uh, when it falls on the panel with the copper uh, line, and when the orientation is very different, which uh, really everything changes, the way you look and everything, you right know. For me, it was really interesting to do that. And also, this is my work, because this is how I work. It's always like this, <laughs> never like that, you know. Only when I exhibit, I see like that. So this is how I work. It's always horizontal and flat and flat. So, so that was it. I wanted to show it like that. So it's also it brings in a lot of questions, like you know, something on the panel on the well, how do you how do you respond? Yeah, that's it. And these are two again concrete molds, which again taken from those uh, tools, like you know, actually, uh, which uh, you know, all these designs. So I kind of wanted to make it in an entirely um, different medium and see what happens. So that's how we can go further. I did a mold in concrete. The same geometric pattern in what you've seen in this little, yeah. This again, like just installation shots, and uh, yeah. The scale also works. Uh, I mean, it meant to me, I mean, in person, when you see, there are a lot of nuances one can talk about and see, like, you know, when it's smaller, you can read the line, like, I mean, you can see the line from edge to edge. It's a large panel, it's, it's really high to see. You don't see the line from it, but you have to imagine. It's very participatory. I always say my work, all those panels, like it commands participation. You really have to complete the work. H to H line, or the thing up, you go at one point and you don't see at all. Like you put in midpoint, you can see something, and you go close, you see something, and you call it painting. Or I mean, I've been asked many times. Like the ambiguity, you know, uh, is interesting. I mean, that is that's all like the ambiguity that it's not clear on its part, right? You know. There's clarity on its part because, like I said, the whole process involved in making the panel is uh, like the sculpture, right? Like, you know, you are building something and removing something and building something and removing something, and it's just unlike a painting, so but then uh, it's not. Uh, an object object, it's, it's an ambiguity. Uh, you have to see that, then you don't have to be out there or there or whatever. You know, just be that. So, like small panels, and I try to show different kinds of drama within whatever there, you know, one can really look at little, little things and nuances and really can think about tensions or connections or divergence, like everything when you really put up the work. So that's what I try to do. Like, you know, try to put uh, you know, whatever it's there and try to think about you know, how one can really read. For well, personally, for me, I enjoy doing that. So yeah, that could be one. This is my early show. Like, the first one, and then it goes to like, yeah, it ends here. So, if you have any questions, <laughs> thank you.
Does anybody have any questions? We can take a couple of them as much as you want. Anyway, I can take questions. Good. So what is difficult for me is because the nature of the work is very, very subtle. And it needs to be seen. Like, I mean, uh, certain works are like that. Uh, so for me, it's always difficult to uh, talk about it. Because it can only be words and words and words. Which is also not nice. It's so minimal. You know? I mean, I think I spoke a lot. Uh, I mean, it's so meaningful. It needs to be seen. Like, you know, and to experience, and then you have to ask, and like I said, to participate, to see what is what, what is not. Uh, that was an example of the financial sector, like how people do that. So, if you have any questions, yes, please. Uh, have you tried this other time to buy a copper wire?
No, I just wanted to <coughs> ask you that this kind of work, this kind of practice, is a little short, short changed in India because you don't have much writing on this kind of work, this kind of abstraction, because the socio political takes center stage. Mm -hmm. So, what difficulties have you faced in terms of exhibiting, getting your work out there? I mean, maybe you haven't faced any, right? <laughs> but in terms of also getting it, getting it contextualized and written about. So, we really find this kind of work, this kind of minimal work, kind of you know, fewer part. It's very easy that for writers. I mean, I think that I, I totally agree with you. I started long ago. It took really years to sort of to work in the scene. I started experimenting in about 2007. I started sort of the idea came again to do with the you know, the, 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 the uh, process in what we did. In a way, uh, don't be to this. You know, I, I did arrive the way history or whatever to this kind of uh, 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 approach. Uh, it's all kind of, uh, I, I personally didn't like the six categories of abstraction or reason. It's all this is, it's all blurred. I, I, I identified it totally through making. You know, and I enjoy making objects with that. And it took some time for even people to, when I, I, I mean, when I had an exhibition, it was appreciated and fortunate, but still, I think it took me some time for people to even respond. And uh, in that way, I don't know how much uh, you know, people uh, know, it's, it's really lonely uh, in trying to sort of be, we are trying to find our own path and our own language, and it's not really, uh, no, you don't see, I mean, no, others cannot. Maybe respond. I think that's not a problem. I won't call it. It's not problematic. But then, uh, all I ask is the space, the rest of the space, yeah. everything. Yeah, that's why I'm here right now. All the time. No, anyway, then they should just. No, just one observation that I think maybe pertaining to India and the Indian uh, scenario of artists and the community. There, there are many artists working quietly in their own spaces and it just becomes quiet. And there are people who are making noise and that gets heard. So I don't know how does one reconcile with that. I guess there would be time for everything, but uh, I think it's sad. I think the openness of being more inclusive with all kinds of different practices would make the entire environment far more animated and active and interesting. That is what art is about. And if we can't do that as an artist, then what are we doing? We are just otherwise making classifications. So I don't know. I think we should let ourselves go and. Uh, I mean, I mean, understanding the world as well as yourself,
Any more questions? Thank you, ma'am, for your brilliant um, presentation. Thank you, ma'am, for your brilliant presentation and for sharing your work and the process behind it. So now I welcome our next speaker for the evening, artist Babu Ishwar Prashad. Babu Ishwar Prasad, born in 1968 in Karnataka, he completed his art education in painting from College of Fine Arts, Karnataka, Chitrakala Parishad, Bangalore, and printmaking from Faculty of Fine Arts, MS University, Baroda. His first solo show of paintings, The Midnight Sun at Sakshi Gallery in Bangalore in 1996, was followed by Still Lives of Antonis in Karnataka, Chitrakala Parishad, Bangalore in 1999 and Smiles in Shadows at Sakshi Gallery, Bangalore and Bombay in 2002. Time past, time present, time to come at Bodhi Art in Mumbai, Mumbai 2007. Since then, he has participated in several group curated shows in Bangalore, Baroda, Bombay, Chennai, Lucknow and New Delhi. Babu was a recipient of Senior Fellowship and National Scholarship Ministry of HRB Government of India and Karnataka Lalit Kala Academy Award, amongst others. His works have featured in Bangalore's Gallery of Modern Art Karnataka, Lalit Kala Academy, and several other public and private collections in India and abroad. Babu's other interests include sculpting, video art, and conducting workshops for art students. His video film Notes from My Diary was made as part of Max Muller Bhavan's video workshop with German artist Norbert Miesner. His other video Splice and Duska, Duska Bees have been screened at several venues, festivals including Al Biennale Romania and South Asian Visual Arts Collective Toronto. Babu created a time-specific installation at Koch International Artist Workshop in Mysore in 2002 and participated in several other collaborative projects. Babu lives and works in Bangalore, India. Sir, we welcome you to present our work. 